A couple of years ago, I got a text message from my sister, and it read, Chloe, my little niece, is asking why we call it Good Friday if Jesus died. Sometimes children are able to get to the heart of the matter. Right? Why do we call it Good Friday if it's the day that Jesus died? Well, the theme that I'm going with throughout these days of the Triduum is that this changes everything. That what we're celebrating has to change the way we live our lives. It has to change everything. It changes everything that we know. And so yesterday, as we celebrated Holy Thursday, we celebrated the institution of the priesthood, we celebrated the institution of the Eucharist, and we celebrated uh, fraternal charity. Right, the fact that the, what Jesus has done for us, we're called to do for others. And we see that that fraternal charity is lived out by Jesus in the fact that he loved his own to the end. That that is now the measure of love. That love goes to the end. Right, that love is willing to be destroyed for the sake of what one loves. And today we see that love in action. We see that love in action, particularly on the cross. Right? What is today's celebration? What is the fact that we come here to worship a God who hung on the cross? What does that change for us? And the answer, I think, is that it has to change our understanding of what good is. Right? Why do we call it Good Friday if it's the day that Jesus died? Why do we call it good if we have a worldly understanding of that word? Right? What is good? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Right? Heaven is the greatest good. That's the good that Jesus came to bring us. Right? The good news. The good news of salvation in and through Jesus. And all other goods, if they really are worthy of that name, a good, have to be directed at that greatest good. Right? We can't call anything good if it's not going to help us get to heaven. And so it's good that a parent brings their child to the church and has their child baptized. Right? Having eternal life spring up in their child. That is a good thing. It orients them towards God. It orients them towards heaven. It's a good thing when we priests preach the truth. Especially when it's difficult. Because as any good parent knows, kids sometimes don't know what they need. And so the parent has to tell them, has to guide them, on the way to what is good. And sometimes, if you're a kid like me, you don't want to hear it. And so it's a good thing for the priest or any Christian to speak out and to guide someone in the way to the good. It's a good thing to do what we're doing today, right? To, to have these periods where we fast, where we abstain from meat. Because that bodily pain that we feel helps to remind us that food, although it's wonderful, is not the greatest good. And it reminds us to focus on what really is good. Right? To focus on heaven. And so our fasting, our abstinence, our abstaining from meat, becomes better the more it reminds us to focus on heaven. The more it reminds us to focus on what truly is good. So I said that the cross is love in action. Right? That the cross reveals to us what love looks like. And this goes along with something that one of my favorite theologians says. I love St. Thomas Aquinas. Anytime I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll Google St. Thomas Aquinas on this subject. And usually I'll find what I'm looking for. And St. Thomas Aquinas says that to love is to will the good of the other. To want the good for someone is to love them. Which is why parents who love their children will sometimes fuss at them. 
because they want them to be good, right? If a child's running over to a hot stove, they can say no. They might even give them a little, little love tap, huh? To guide them into what is good. Because they love their child, they want the good for them. And they try to help them to accomplish it. And so on the cross, throughout his life, right? But on the cross especially, Christ is willing our good. Right? Not our good that we would be financially successful. Not our good that we would, you know, not have any major illness. Not our good that life would be easy. But our good in the sense of the greatest good. He's willing and he's acting to accomplish for us that we can achieve the greatest good that is heaven. And so Christ looks out on the people from the cross and he loves them to the end. He wills their good. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I've been reading and rereading an, uh, an essay that then Cardinal Ratzinger, Pope Benedict, wrote. In this essay that he wrote, he was writing to a group called Communion and Liberation, and he's writing to them this uh, essay entitled, Wounded by the Arrow of Beauty. And his sort of launching pad for this essay is the fact that there are two different ways that the church introduces a psalm that we pray in the Liturgy of the Hours. For the whole year, save Holy Week, this particular psalm is introduced by saying that uh, God is lovely, right? That he is beautiful to look upon. And then during Holy Week, we change and we use uh, another antiphon to introduce it, saying that there was nothing beautiful about the one who was beaten, right? The one who we heard about from Isaiah, the suffering servant. There was no beauty in him. And so he's trying to explain this sort of paradox. And in this essay, he says, he writes, In the passion of Christ, the marvelous Greek ascetic, which is the idea of physical beauty, with its tentative contact with the divine, has not been abolished, but rather transcended. So he's saying the fact that we say that there was nothing physically beautiful about Christ in his passion does not negate the fact that beautiful things are good and that they're true and that they can guide us to what is true. He says the experience of the beautiful has received a new depth and a new realism. Right? Because beautiful things are meant to draw us closer to God. They're not an end in themselves. Right? We don't love beautiful things because just for the sake of the beautiful thing. Right? We saw this this past week. Right? With the burning of Notre Dame. Everyone was distraught. Even incredibly secular people were really upset because this beautiful cathedral burned. And they were upset because whether we realize it or not, it stands for something more. Right? It's not just a beautiful building, but it stands for faith. Right? It stands for some greater power that we all look up to. He says, the one who is beautiful itself let himself be struck in the face, spat upon, crowned with thorns. And this is the the line I really wanted to stress. Yet precisely in this face, in the face of the crucified Christ, that is so disfigured, there appears the genuine, the ultimate beauty, the beauty of love that goes to the very end, and thus proves to be mightier than falsehood and violence. So in the face of Christ, who has been beaten, who's been spat upon, who's been tortured for our sake, who hangs upon the cross, we see the most beautiful thing of all. More beautiful than Notre Dame, more beautiful than your spouse, more beautiful than anything. Right? We see in that crucified face, A love that is willing to go to the end. A love that suffered every possible suffering we can ever imagine to encounter. In anything that we suffer, because Christ was crucified, we can look upon the cross and we can know that there is someone who gets it. There's someone who understands it. 
Right? There's someone who has been through it. There's someone who has redeemed it. And so we look upon the crucified Christ and we see what good really means. Right? We see that good means loving to the end so that others can have what you have. And so we should spend some time for the rest of this day and throughout tomorrow pondering that question posed to my sister and to me by that young child. Why do we call it Good Friday? If this is the day that Jesus died, why do we call it good? And we're going to give our response to that question, our answer to that question, in just a little while when we sing as we are unveiling the cross. Because the deacon will sing, Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. That's why we call it good. Because through his sacrifice came the salvation of the world. And so we respond, come let us adore him.